Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to Print Towels, Print Hustlers Podcast. This is another episode, another in-person one. Super excited to be able to have Justin and Aaron to be able to drive down from their humble suburb abode. Yeah. All the way down back to Chicago. The original uh, area, though, of Barrel Maker, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we were actually That's why, that's why they Chicago, say Chicago, home of the barrel makers. <laughs> yeah, it used, to, it used to be Chicago maker printing, but then we thought barrel sounded a little bit like better Buffalo than Chicago. <laughs> yeah, it had better SEO to it. And, and we were making barrels. So. Yeah, we were turning uh, <laughs> shirts into barrels. Yeah. And then back into shirts and then printing on them. Yeah. For really cheap. Uh, Justin and Aaron started Barrel Maker. When did when did you guys? St- it's been a while. It's always been there, but no, we sort we, of. Okay. Okay, no. you tell okay, the. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah, let me tell the story. Okay. I don't, uh, hey, 2000... I didn't invite me on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're an easy person to be on the podcast with because you talk so much. Um, no, we started it in 2008 in Chicago in our apartment. So. Were you Were you guys? In, like downtown or where? Uh, we lived in Logan Square, uh, um, so northwest side of the city. Um, what were you yeah. doing then, day jobs wise? Um, well, I was working retail and like serving tables. Um, Justin. We were having children out of wedlock. Yeah, we had <laughs> one. We had one child out of out of wedlock. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. um, hello, judge us. Just go ahead and judge us. Um, and, and he was probably our our son Cooper. He was I don't know. He was a baby, and we started di- designing like little baby shirts for him. And um, they were really bad, but we thought they were good at the time. Really? <laughs> In retrospect, they're they, they're real bad. Really bad. Yeah. Um, but we actually like kind of there's some like local. Um, Logan Square shops started to sell them so then we obviously had to produce them so we were outsourcing them to printers these little baby shirts um, and um, also like like little dresses made from men's dress shirts we were like upcycling you know it's like a big thing like upcycled fashion so we, we were kind of like trying to bust into the like the youth market in the upcycling fashion. I think everybody world. who has kids, <laughs> like when you first have kids, you're like, oh, we're going to make kids products because it's just like there. Sure. Yeah. And you're I like, I could do this better. Yeah. Yeah. But like some of our weird, the kid, the dresses were really weird. And now Ivy, our, our daughter, she's three now, but like, she, I think she just outgrew it. No, like, she wears it. She's. We we busted out of the archives one of the like upcycled dresses. Sure, sure. Those were interesting because we would go thrifting and basically buy men's shirts and then convert them into like kind of these a what is it like an a frame an a line a line skirts. Yeah. <laughs> they were like pleated, real weird, right? Like they're kind of a weird look to them. I mean, I still really like them. Yeah. Um. Anyway. That's, yeah. Yeah. So we we but the shirts weren't looking good. The dresses were fine. But the shirts weren't looking good. So um, Justin bought a press. Was like, we're just, we're printers now. <laughs> and so he learned. Yeah. Well, just on Amazon or? The- no. Um, so I was on, I got fired from my job. So I was doing like marketing for like, kind of like real estate marketing. Uh-huh. Um, and it was 2008, 2009. Oh, so like okay. Everybody like basically got fired. Right. Um, so I got fired and I got an unemployment check and basically instead of paying rent or buying groceries or whatever, I was like, you know what, let's manufacture the, the shirts ourselves. So we bought, we went to a place that we used to drive by all the time on Milwaukee. I, I don't know if it's still here. Was it called like Chicago mm-hmm. Silkscreen Company or Chicago I Screen? I think that's still here. It, I feel yeah. like Is it, it might, on the highway? It's like right off the highway. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I see it when I drive on the highway. Yeah, it's a weird little like kind of rundown looking building or whatever. And I think we went in there with a couple hundred dollars. And I, I remember being like, we have a budget. We don't know anything about printing. Can you like help us basically? And I think we walked out of there with clamps that you would put like on a table for like poster printing. Like a water-based emulsion. Um, I think white water-based ink. Yeah. One, oh, one clamp. 
not even two clamps. I think we had one yeah, clamp. Yeah, we were real confused and we left. <laughs> so we left with like basically our money spent or like a portion of our money spent. And to be honest, at this point, I was still like pretty annoyed that like my crazy husband was like, like this is what we're doing now just because he said so, you know? <laughs> like yeah. there was like yeah. a little bit of that dynamic. Sorry. I was like, what are you doing <laughs> yeah. here? What are you, what are you getting me into, you know? So we had some of this <laughs> random shit, but like it didn't totally... I mean, in retrospect, it wasn't the right route at all. No. So then I think we started watching, I don't even know if it was both of us or if it was me, but it's probably I found some like point, some yeah. of those like early like, you know, Ryanet videos yeah. and probably Cat Spit at the time too. Yeah, and yeah. start watching those. And so I hit up Ryanet and I bought a, um, you know, like a silver press. Like a lot of, a lot of people in our generation, we got a silver press. And probably a few, like maybe they had a package at the time that actually had stuff that was like more cohesive and made sense. Because I know when we got in touch with Ryanet, we were actually able to start, you know, like like the, the first trip, our first venture into it, like didn't make sense. But then we had the stuff to actually like make a screen and do it. So, Wait, so you got the first one. And so this is just didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like, and it didn't even, it wasn't like the right Got setup. it. So the second one was like, I think this is more of a... Yeah, like it was like a tabletop press. I think we had squeegees. I know we had like little ink, like the inks were like pints. Like they were tiny little things of yeah. ink. But um, we set up basically like in our, in our bathroom and um, our bathroom was where we sprayed out. Uh, so we had a tiny closet that was like a washer and dryer and we turned that into like a dark room. So we coated some screens in there, put them in a garbage bag, and then exposed them with like, you know, a, a yellow, like, or no, it was like a, a halogen, halogen bulb, light. Yeah, over the top halogen light. The whole bulb, like yeah. basic, yeah. like very basic starter kit, you know? So we did that, um, made like one screen. And then once we made a screen, I reached out to someone that I knew from high school who had a podcast. And actually, like, it's kind of funny that we're podcasting right now, but like, he was pod he started his podcast in like 2004 2005 like he was super Visionary. super yeah. early in the po podcasting out of his mom's basement i mean he's a horrible person and his podcast is terrible but he had a big audience so i reached out to him and he used to have this forum on his site that was really active uh -huh. um so i hit him up and i was like hey my wife and i started a, a print shop like we have all the top of the line stuff like we're really good blah 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 <laughs> like would you be interested in you know maybe we could print some of the shirts for your show and trade for like maybe a banner on your forum and he was also a really good graphic designer so he made he agreed he made us a banner he put it on his forum and I think he ordered maybe a hundred shirts to start Anvil 980s. Like I learned <laughs> screen printing from his order. I was like, he ordered Anvil 980s. So then um, we tr tried to do his prints. We started water based. So we were doing Yikes. water based with a, a, a blow dryer in our living room. Like total mess. We it gave them for all you. Uh t-shirt files out there uh the design of the shirt was like the classic run dmc shirt mm -hmm. uh, you know white red on black big block letters um and we were trying to do that with water-based ink in our, lines, in our apartment <laughs> and being like nothing is working life is terrible you know like yeah. it was so miserable like just trying so hard just trying and trying and trying but we we give them 100 shirts <laughs> And he was, he's like, okay, cool. Like these like 68 of them are terrible. We're like, all right. Okay. So then we'd like print them some more, you know? And eventually it was like, cool. We got him that order, you know? So we got a little bit better at it. And, yeah. um, but because he had this banner, we also right away started getting other orders. Wait, so, so the banner was banner was custom t-shirts or something. Yeah. It was like, yeah. it was like barrel maker. I think we started as like we had like Barrel Maker Clothing Company printing division or some weird shit. And then it was like, oh, let's just do Barrel Maker printing. Because we were still like initially, we were still doing this clothing line and we had our clothes in a few like local stores. Okay. Um, but we immediately got orders. I, I One of our first orders was like West Virginia. And I know then we had an order from Ohio. This was within like a week of doing this. So it was like, wait a second, like, we have orders, right? Like we're, this is something we could do. And sure. I think right away we just like switched to like custom printing. And I started making 
a website. So like we had a next door neighbor who helped us make this clothing website and I learned how to like, I kind of like how you like learned how to code, Mm -hmm. you know, I learned how to, how to go in there and basically manipulate the website that she made and turn it all. Cause I didn't want to pay for a new website. So I figured out how to turn that into like, a was it like an website. HTML site or a WordPress site? It wasn't word. Was it WordPress? I don't think it was WordPress, but it was sort of a templated thing. Okay. It wasn't WordPress. Cause I switched to WordPress probably four months later. My focus immediately was like market, build a website, pitch a web we need a website and i still today everything that i do is focused on like can i get it on our site is all the info to sell us on our site so that there's one source to always like when someone asks me a question it's like boom it's on the site when i'm training someone it's like look at our site like it's all sure there but we got orders from these other states so i think the dynamic shifted to like me working on the website and aaron was like printing them and it was kind of fun because we were in our living room. It was a new thing. We could play music loud. We, you know, you could smoke in in the house or whatever. <laughs> oh, like yeah. it was, you know, it was the '60s, so it was like <laughs> it was good times and um, the '60s. But like there were little things along the way. Like I remember the first time we mixed ink. Like we made, we didn't have orange ink, for example, but we had an order that needed orange, and it was like, wait, you could combine red and yellow. Right. Like I knew that from like taking art classes, like growing up and stuff. But like it was like oh, we could actually mix this stuff around and, like, play with it. So, yeah, we did that for, I don't know how long it was, actually. Nine months to a year, somewhere in there. We yeah. we just... Printing in the living room. Printing in the yeah. living room. I know we made, to get into revenue, real quick, I know we got up to just under $200,000. Wow. It's cool. just funny just thinking about it. I mean, we obviously never pushed past that manual phase. Yeah. But... Uh, that was so similar and just the like not knowing so much yeah about everything yeah and it's crazy now to think about it and then go back and just be like totally holy crap i mean i didn't know anything about trade shows oh yeah i I just burn shirts and you know wild wild (laughs) west type of orders for sure yeah you know yeah we had a customer that had some real specific colors um we did a lot of water base. Like we started out water base, and then we did a little bit of like a little bit of plastisol and kind of soy. We were doing soy inks. Oh yeah, we were but, like um, we're so eco friendly. We do soy plastic. But we had <laughs> we had this customer. Uh, I remember the first time that I printed with plastisol. I was like, this is great. Like, wow, this is so it's <laughs> like, so this easy. Is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we but but I didn't know I didn't know what like. Pantone colors were. Yeah. This is like after we moved into a warehouse and stuff. And um, was that had... the one that you had up north? Mm-hmm. The place that we moved into, we just started in. in uh, I think it was like fourteen hundred square feet. We got a really good deal. It was like under six hundred bucks for fourteen hundred square feet. Wait, was this the one with the the windows? Didn't yeah. have very good heat and everything. We didn't even really. Have yeah, windows. We, yeah, we. Yeah, <laughs> we. I mean, we didn't. Like glass windows. Or there was were, this, there, yeah, there no, were there were like panels. big glass windows, um, and like some of them didn't open, and some of them were stuck open, and like in some places it was like actually just missing a window. So yeah. um, in the winter, like there's some pictures of me. Um, during this period of time where I'm printing like with like a turtleneck on and then like a sweater over that, which is you'd never see in a print shop. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but um, yeah, because we didn't have heat. So, I mean, I guess technically, price, technically we had really heat, cheap. but it doesn't really, it didn't, it wasn't enough to like combat the like it's still actual there for a while. wind coming yeah. in. Yeah, we were there. We were in the third mm-hmm. floor. We moved on the third floor first, and we were there. I don't even know. It was like, great for at us. Least, at least a year and a half, maybe yeah, two years. We outgrew the third floor, and then we went to the first floor, and then on the first floor, we ended up renting you know, a unit next to us, and then eventually we rented the unit next to that and took the wall down. And so, I mean, we were able to really expand within that building. Yeah. Probably could have... I mean, I would still be there, honestly. I... I would go back now, which probably people think is fucking crazy, but like crazy. I would not go back now. It was tight. It was tight. It was it was really cheap rent, but like you get what you pay for. Yeah, but I I have some video footage where I look at like 2016 and I see like 
I think we had three automatic presses wedged into probably about 3,800 square feet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you couldn't, you had to like go sideways to walk through them. I it remember. Was, like, and then there was like boxes along <laughs> the wall. Most, and... most oh, yeah. profitable print shop. Like, like I look at that and I'm like, yes, it was tight. Yes, there were cockroaches in a bunch of the orders. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. In the boxes? Was, uh, no, we replaced we barely had oh. We barely had working plumbing. It was... Um, but yeah, we had some... Or the, they didn't get sent out to the customers because we, we caught it. But we had some orders, like completed orders that like um, like cockroaches were born in. Dude. Yeah. Ra- One Rachel time I moved I- a box and like there was just like a random rat nest in it for real. And a rat yeah. like it ran out. Yeah, This is a true was, story. We had a... Was, a, Crazy times. We had a bean <laughs> on top of Rachel's desk, right? We had like a coffee bean on her desk. Just one. So we had an exterminator out for the cockroaches. And the exterminator was there. And we're like, hey, this is a, a cockroach egg. And he's like, no, that's a coffee bean. And Rachel's <laughs> like, no, I think this is a cockroach egg. So we're, this, we're debating this with an exterminator. So then we take a knife and we cut it open and a little clear, like tiny baby cockroach runs out of it. We're like, I think you were wrong. (laughs) You know, it's like, yeah. Did you have any idea that there was a baby cockroach in there? You just knew because. No, actually I did it a bunch of times after that to see and none of them had ever came out. Like that was just like perfect. Um, but wow. then, but then to, to even get grosser in this story, let's get real gross. The, yeah, let's go. Let's yeah. go all full on gross. The the exterminator was like, you know, I could kill these cockroaches, but they're actually coming out of that pipe in the corner of the room, which is like the sewage main, and you see how there's um, actual like poop or something. No, it was a sewage main to the building, but there was a, uh, what's it called? Moss. There was moss growing on it uh-huh. because it was actually just like crumbling. It looks pretty so, though. Like it was some greenery. It was like, so <laughs> moss like grow- moss but- growing on this old pipe and there were like you know, cockroaches coming out of it. So yeah. That said, it we was... went on a lot of like family vacations that year. <laughs> like I felt like it was... Yeah, I mean, I definitely look back. We grew our business. It it served like it served it was a purpose lame. at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was also like it was very stressful. I remember one Why? time because of how the, the growth and everything, or um, yeah, the growth, the the building. I think at that period of time, I I personally was going from like a printer in a room to like. A manager, a people manager, sure. Um, and so there was just like there's just a learning curve to that, and it just happened really quickly. And so I felt like I was just like trying to catch up on everything. And I also had kids for a portion of that time. I was I was pregnant and printing, mm-hmm. and then printing with a baby, and then, I mean, you know, you you just wake up and do what you got to do. But I yeah, I personally was very stressed out. <laughs> that time also very good times you know what I mean like it hand in hand like very good times like we had like a lot of people who worked at barrel maker um you know that like how many people did you guys have have, like true love and affection for um we got automatic presses and like that was very exciting and we started teaching the screen printing experience oh yeah which was exciting you guys have a great photo back in there whenever you walk in where it's like you with like longer, more punk rock hair and everything. Oh, and yeah. I always see that because it's the first thing you see when you go into the bathroom now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Which one is it? It's just, that's in our apartment. It's like. Oh, okay. It's like. It's like in your new up, facility. Oh, yeah. 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 The. Um, that, that, yeah, that was in our apartment. Yeah. we Our neighbor uh, like um, took photos sometimes and she had like a nice camera. So we had her come and take a whole bunch of photos of our. Oh yeah, I forgot that was that was her. Wait, with, with that, how in many people apartment. were in that space too? And you said three presses, Probably too? eighteen. I think it yeah, was ish. about eighteen. So it was people. just a lot of like growing. A lot of growing. Yeah, we also had a really solid we, internship program. So <laughs> yeah, like, true. what does we, that mean? Just, we had like four to six interns from the art institute oh, at okay. all the time. So we had like free. Basically, at one point, okay, so we started getting interns way before we could even like keep up. Like I reached out to the Art Institute like early on and started getting us interns. But then I think there's this realization where like, oh wait, we should be utilizing interns like 
pull shirts because we had some big orders. Like we had like a couple 60, 70,000 piece orders that are like double sided and things like that. So we had a lot of work to do. So there were definitely jobs where you just needed someone to kind of like, you know, sort of like unskilled labor. Mm -hmm. So we got as many interns as we could from the Art Institute, which I think at one point was like six, which is no. great. Yeah. We had like a ton of interns. At one time? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think at one time. Maybe I think not we had like two or three <laughs> we had at free one labor. time. But... Well, and then we but... also had that program with the the dude who came from the other country to like learn an exchange student. Kind of, but he he like won. It was some sort of thing where he he has a print shop. I introduced you to him actually. Oh, and I yes. think you might he's have in South off. America, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, that was kind of interesting. That was in 2016 because it was during the Cubs like winning the world series yeah. and he was there that the few weeks prior and before the Cubs won the world series, like we did tons of like big runs for like ad campaigns for the Cubs and whatnot. So it was just so busy and like, he, yeah, it was cool though. Like he was really helpful and he learned a lot and he was, well, where, like, where did the growth all come from? You know, I credit, was the no, 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 that oh, just that got was, us started. <laughs> you know, I credit like, uh, Justin for really like, driving sales uh-huh. um and i think justin needs to stay at the computer like that's where he needs to be for our business to to like survive like or to because he really he always has you know he's really good at sales he has like a natural i don't know f- is it flair you have a flair for is it, it? Flair? Some flair. Is it's it a like flair. a, it's a flair. Type yeah it's like a top hat and cane type deal <laughs> no um but also like um I don't know. He he was good at seeing what worked and like sticking with it. Uh-huh. And he also um, sometimes to like my, you know, maybe detriment or it would make me angry. Sometimes he was like, no, like I don't, I'm going to get the order and I just want it handled. Like yeah. I just want it handled. He's just always said yes. He never turned down an order which just helped really grow in the referrals well i just i just make it a discipline to market every single day i do it now i i mean i every day i operate as though like we're going out of business and i (laughs) i genuinely feel that way like it's not like i'm like like i legit always think that having that i think it's like a fragile fine line between like doing really well and like living on the streets homeless, you know? Mm-hmm. And so like, I think that's a mentality where like, just have you, so li- you, have you always had that since yeah. you guys started it? Yeah. Then? Yeah. 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 Cause I, w- I was on unemployment when we started the business, I got my job back, but this, when we decided to do this, I wanted, I was all in, you know, this is like what I want to do. Um, so it's important to me to like be able to have a uh, constant, revenue like we function so much better as a shop if we have money coming in you know i mean money does like solve like you know orders that get messed up it solves like a lot of problems because you could buy the things that you need to operate yeah, the, tr- the trick payroll. is is to like continue operating smoothly even when money is coming in because there's a lull between money coming in on the front end and the the chaos that ensues on the back end right um because of like turnaround times and just the the nature of the screen printing process itself so like like justin there will be days like this was a challenge i think for us like on a more personal level like he's feeling really good because he's managing the money and taking the orders and i'm feeling like crazy chaotic stressed um, managing, like the back managing the back end, trying to get it all done. And so it's, it's kind of like one person's stress kind of ruins the other person's good time, yeah. like over and over again. Cause like when I was feeling good, you know, on the back end is when he's really stressed on the front end. Cause he doesn't feel like there's enough orders. And I'm like, I got my schedule sure. done today, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It was, so that, that dynamic was really challenging then. Um, that lag is still hard. Cause you'll like, I'll have, a couple days where I'm like, man, we're, we're just slow. Like we're not doing that good. And then you go into production and they're super busy and they're overwhelmed, but it's like those like two bad days that we just had, like that hasn't hit them yet. You know what I mean? And also like when you're trying to make like 
uh, changes like coming from the front end from the way information in particular in particular the way information flows from the front end to the back end you have to continually remind your employees like I know we just made this change, but you're not going to see that made until a week from now, right? Because the orders that you're looking at today or you're going to look at tomorrow after this change was made were, you know, they took place at a time when we hadn't discussed this issue yet. So managing just like people's frustration with one another, sure. sometimes a la that lag, you have to constantly remind people. How, how would yeah. you, you know, having go through a lot of that growth and now you guys are in a brand, or well, I mean, a fairly new facility, pretty big space, uh, more people and, and orders and all that. But if you were to go back, especially on the production side, yeah. to give somebody advice that maybe just starting to, to ramp up the sales and orders are starting to get chaotic, what would you tell them? This is something that like we still struggle with on and off, but like it's really, really, we were just talking about this on the way here, actually. The one thing that you really need to remain profitable you need somebody on your floor who is only trying to get orders out the door that's it that's all they're doing so every action that they take during the day is to remove an obstacle to get the order out right so if they come onto the floor and they see just even just like the orders mismatched to presses mm -hmm. right like you know your manual printer is you know lackadaisically if that's the word, um, you know, printing these 500 things and your 12 color press is doing a like seven or eight or 10 color, you know, 30 shirt order and they're trying to get the pink right or something like, like these are like, you need somebody who's going to look at that and say, how am I going to get the, the most done out of the situation? How am I going to get the most things boxed up Boxed up is that on the, the production manager? Or it is can that, be the I production anybody... manager, but, but, but the production manager can be pulled in like one trillion directions, mm -hmm. right? It's just the matter, the, the nature of the beast. Like they can be bogged down by every single detail that's not working for every single person in your shop. And you, they, they can't, they just can't. They have to be the one that's saying, switch these orders. You have an empty print head and your colors being tweaked. Let's throw this order up there. Can Grab you get these 350 shirts done this hour? I want to down the, get this done. You know, they need somebody to just rearrange people constantly orders constantly to make sure that they're on the dock. And if, you know, just like somebody that's driving momentum, because I mean, it feels like a very undervalued role because a lot of shops don't invest in that. I don't know how you. It has to be the, the person. right person. Yeah. It's, yeah. So so it's, there's it's difficult. We're I mean we've struggled with it on and off. Yeah, my all, the whole time. I yeah. mean, I would say like my biggest uh, flaw, like personality flaw or like trait, would be that I spot those things and. Like I spot them right away, which is great, and that's a positive thing. But I then resent the fact that no one else spotted it, and I just get annoyed. And I'll like call Aaron, and be like, "Dude, could you believe what's happening here? Like this person's doing this, sure. and this person doing this, and why didn't anyone else just realize that? Like if we move this here, it would just be done in twenty minutes, and then they could go back to their lives and stuff. And as opposed to like me going out and like just being like addressing it myself and like fixing it or trying to train other people to do it i like just resent the fact that no one else caught it and i'm like why 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 did i have to catch it and get the order that did it or whatever sure. you know and so um i'm trying to get better at that like i'm trying to actually be aware that like hey like if i want the shop to grow like i need to like not be so judgy i need to be as helpful as i can I well need how, to, like, how would train. you shift that because i'm sure there's other people that feel the same way yeah especially as being an owner like you're always in it and so okay, there's that think, transition of the business where you don't i think the hardest it. thing is there's so many people that give the same advice which is like you know like um hire quickly fire quickly you know and um, i think that like i think the fire quickly is something that like I, I don't really know anyone who's like really really good at it but it's so important. We're, I would say we're absolutely terrible at it. I would put us yeah, at like, we're the worst. We're the worst. Yeah. Like we've, we're, we're so bad at it. Well, I'm fire. sure you'd be just a complete jerk though. If... Dude, but <laughs> thanks. But like, if you I were really, like, really, I mean, imagine no, somebody but, who was I think very... that's the solution though. I think like... if we cycled through more people quicker, we would identify those, those people who, cause when you have a, a let's say like 
a worker. But we can you I about, truly identify it, or do you yeah. view it as like ah they messed up? You know, or like so, sometimes. I don't know. It's difficult. Like um, I don't know. And I always um, really like personally close to people who I work next to. Yeah. Um. So I I typically. Um, want to always give people the benefit of the doubt and sometimes that hasn't worked to my benefit and sometimes it has and it's really really hard you know but I don't know I would say that like uh, I had a really hard time still have a really hard time with the idea of just like cutting people loose when they make a mistake and kind of like like you know like being that like capitalist machine that just wants to spin 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 yeah. and you know I, I don't want like to own a business that's gonna just grind people up and spit them out like that's not ever who i wanted barrel maker to be um and then there's the other side of that where it's like barrel maker won't exist if it you know if people aren't working sure so yeah. so it's finding a balance between you know, that kind of like in our generation and maybe in the millennial generation, there's this whole thing of like, um, this is, you know, your second home and we're all a family here. And this kind of like rhetoric that comes along um, with maybe like startups or, you know, businesses like, you know, we want everybody to get along and we're just family here. We're like family. And like you want a balance between that and like you have to get shit done quickly or we're, we're not gonna like turn a profit and we have to turn a profit if we want to feed all of ourselves that's what i think that barrel maker st strives to do is like to try to find that balance but it's it's shifting all the time you know what i mean mm -hmm. and like, so you recommend just really finding that, you gotta, that person you have to find the person force the orders through and get yeah. things done i think if you have that person you're you're good you know i mean i really think that's like i don't i don't feel like we necessarily have that person right now um it's something that's lacking, you know, but I think that that's, that's what keeps a, a shop like well balanced and like moving along. And, and it depends, you know, I, I feel like each shop is structured like a little bit differently because it really is built by the people that kind of work there and you have to be able to see people's skill sets, you know, sure. and a lot of times we'll hire people for one thing, but the, their skill set, you know, will will be actually something else. And we're like, well, you should do this other thing. So you're, yeah. you know, this is what you're really good at. Um, and you kind of, I don't know. So we've kind of like plugged holes in our production area, like, like that way. Having one person, just even a time of day, you know, like if you, you know, if you want to get your schedule done, you, the chances that you need to like shuffle it up, like midday are strong. Like, you know, cause you're, cause people have, good days people have bad days orders get pulled off press you know yada 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 and you need somebody there who says okay so all this stuff just happened how am i still gonna get the most out of this day right that crazy day. balance of personalities and the customization yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, yeah i think something else like in our industry that's kind of challenging is um you have to be open to the fact that people aren't gonna be here forever you know what i mean like it's it's um so this is like my career, right? Like I own this business, like mm -hmm. I have no intentions of going anywhere else. But like But it could you, be like a stop. For, yeah, you have to yeah. realize that like if you if you have somebody in, you know, a certain position where they're, you know, you only have so much money that you could pay certain roles or that you're paying people to and and a lot of people take a take jobs because like, you know, okay, they need to pay their bills and whatnot, but like bigger picture they want to do you know, something totally different than working like a print shop. So, sure. you know, you could have really great people who work there, but you also like sort of have to like plan a sort of structure around the fact that like maybe in two years this person's going to leave and now someone else is going to fill this role, you know? So you're kind of always looking at like, how do we just keep the shop like, you know, on track, like functioning well, like developing. I think it's really crucial to have like, SOPs and systems in place so that like if somebody new comes along there's like a method for doing it and it's not you're not totally dependent on you know well Bruce does this but if someone else comes in we don't know what they're gonna do you know like you have to know do you feel like you're at a spot or how far do you feel like you're at a spot where things can help run because you mentioned like you don't know if you have that crucial role there just yet uh -huh. does that mean that you just have to be more hands-on still um, 
to me, I think it, it just means we're less profitable and have to be more hands on. It means that like I'm pulled away from my ability to market and like there's there's a real correlation between how much time I spend at a computer and how much money we make. Mm-hmm. Like I if I'm if I Because of the marketing activities? Yeah, just like what? Just emailing follow, customers. Yeah, following up with up. customers, talking sure. to customers, reaching out to new customers. Um, placing, you know, ads, ad words, up just so literally every time, to- the total amount of time that you're not spending on that is almost like strangles the. Yeah, I think so. Really yeah, and, and and I don't and want the, it to. The one, I've- the one thing that I think like it's a simple thing, but um, that Justin always said from the beginning, like, um, is when I get an email, I want to be the first person that emails them back, like. Um, he's very, 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 very prompt. And I think sometimes it's hard if you're pulled away because I know that you're not leaving your computer until your, your, your inbox is like taken care of. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like a big, uh, that's a big statement, you know, it's a big thing to do like every single day. Like, I mean, that's huge though. Just even thinking about from, we had some work done in our house from this like water problems, but we had messaged so many different people and contractor and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But the people who responded first was almost always a person who I'd you go with. with. Because yeah. I think yeah. it also showed to me that I was like, oh, they're on it. Like they're, they're not on active it. business. They want it. But it was surprising how many responses I'd get like days after. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I actually had a couple um maybe this like last like few weeks because it's been like with COVID and stuff too like we've been like shorter staffed and like so I've had to help in a lot more areas and there's a couple emails that I did respond to where like we ended up losing the order because like we had a couple responses and then there were like days that passed and then it was like oh shit like we missed two days and they followed up you know, a couple times and then we wrote back and they're like, oh, I went with somebody else, you mm-hmm. know? And that happened to me twice, like in this So it's just month. like responding and follow up. And like yeah, really, yeah. yeah just, it just reiterates, like, I think like the most, um, I, I just always have the mindset of someone emails us that they've also emailed other print shops. So if we're totally. the first one to respond, um, not only, the, I, I always say if we're the first one to respond, we'll get it because we also have a website that shows that we're like valid and can su- support Reviews it and like, and- our responses will be like accurate. We can link to things like we'll do a good job. So we yeah. just need to, to get that. Well, that fast response is definitely a value add. It's really, it's, I it's mean, really there, it's not, it's not that common for businesses. And no, it's, it's actually, hard. It's hard it, it sounds simple, yes. but it's not easy to do because yes. you just, because it's easy for a month. Yeah. But yeah. it's not for like 10 years. No, right. especially like right. you could be super busy, you know, so like we don't have a big office staff and everybody's like, doing other things so we're writing up orders and like you know Printava doesn't have like a quick way to like create <laughs> you know invoices and whatnot so it's like we're uh the we're all working request. twice as hard as we need to and, <laughs> and so then all of a sudden we miss some of those um but but I the other thing that I do which which really helps me too is I um I, I can't know our schedule and if people try and talk to me about our production schedule I really try and say like I don't want to know the schedule. I don't want to know if we're busy. I don't want to know like just if this more person's behind. I don't yep. want to know for three weeks behind because I'm still gonna say like seven to ten business days. I, I need to like stick to our thing and I need to always assume that we're not busy. Sure. And that's how I operate. And I have um we were just talking about Rachel, but like Rachel has the ability to sub out. We have a couple of print shops that we work with continuously. So when we hit our capacity, they get the orders. And it's, we, you know, it took a while for me to, to be okay with subbing out more and more. Why? Um, just cause I felt like the, our whole business is like, we're, a, we're a print shop. We should do all of it, but, yeah. um, we can't service our customers effectively when we get behind. So at a certain threshold, we need to like be able to okay. maintain our turnaround and we've done a good job actually like at the place now we bring a lot of our screens too. like it, it's just part of having like lower rates we like bring orders to another print shop with the screens with the mock-ups oh, really? like what are yeah. you are you shipping the screens or are they just no nearby? we drive it oh, it's okay. local so um and the i mean the and quality it's important is to be a good contract customer because when you know like we're, we've been on the other end of that when people want to be contract customers, but they're still, they're not providing art. They're not, you know, 
Yeah. They're not like getting keeping up their end of the deal to like get those lower rates. Like so, I mean, I think it's important to like. I think we're a really good con- yeah, a good we'll, contract. Customer. We're like yeah. we do the SAPs, so we do the not... screen, like we do all yeah. of it. If something's wrong, we'll take the blame for it. Like if there's spoilage or issues, we know it happens. If sure. We're, you know, picky about that, but yeah, it's just um for me to be able to like push. I don't want it. Like if I know that we're like killing it i'm not gonna feel motivated to like go out and get a new ice cream parlor that opened or something you know <laughs> so um but i but that said like I thought I, you said when you said get a new ice cream parlor i thought you meant like buy one oh, yeah i yeah i'm i'm a little sick of screen printing we should get into ice cream, <laughs> ice cream. i want to get into um i mean i'm like obsessed with uh motorcycles right now i see yeah i need someone else to do that are you gonna do it? Do what? Ride motorcycles with me? Because <laughs> that's like my. I feel like that's where I want to go. I don't now. know, maybe. Try and what's your deal? Are you you're scared of motorcycles? Yeah. I mean, I, I I was going to get the license, and then I just thought about it, and I mean. You can't think about it because no, no. you're just it's, like I'm gonna fly off. I mean, from from everybody I talk to, it's, it's just safe. like a timing thing of like it's when safe. you get in the accident, and I was like, eh. <laughs> I'd rather do other stuff. I like I don't know if I believe in that anymore. Now yep. that I'm like in it, but I don't think I don't think it's necessarily you driving. I think you could be the best driver. I think it's also other people, it's other people. Yeah. in road conditions that can't be controlled either. Yeah, yeah. Um, like just, there was like I remember reading the news. It's just like oil slick, and you know you didn't see it or whatever or slipped sorry, out, what? and like oil slick on the highway. What oil slick? <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> I got an airbag. Did I tell you? Like, did I show that to you? Oh, I got, the, like, a, uh, it's like a jacket? vest, and if I fall, it'll like inflate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to try that. that. Yeah. Uh, you don't think Aaron's nervous? I I I don't know. I feel like, especially since I I think I got more nervous when you rigged up the um, the speakers inside your helmet. Yeah. I just feel like you're going to be like listening to podcasts or I, like, I am. <laughs> like listening to the pronouncers podcast. Yeah, or like, or like what, what did Jared say? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's less focused. You, yeah, and I mean you've got a lot of qualities, but you're not the most focused no. like guy. But it's really, I really like listening to like podcasts and music and zoning out while <laughs> driving. Yeah, yes. yeah, I, I like it's in my helmet. Driving, yeah. Like it's. it's I mean, like I guess it, you can't hear. Anyway, like over the motorcycle. Yeah, what do you like? Need you're to not hear? U- using your sense of hearing to to stay alive yeah. on a motorcycle. So I guess there's that, but like, you, it's also distracting your. I mean, it looks functions. badass though. It looks cool. Yeah. yeah, I burnt all my taste buds off last night with like hot soup. While on a motorcycle? Or? No, just unrelated. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, <laughs> I either that way. Like, and you're time. eating soup. And yeah. like you're de- Wait, you're so dead. what is the um, <laughs> dead zone? Speaking of this... eating in the car, I always think about that time when <laughs> when uh, we stopped at Whole Foods and I ate like a whole pie with my hands like while driving, oh, and yeah. you were just like, "I'm so disgusted." Yeah, I with your hands, bare Dude, hands, just bare hands. It, yeah, I was, you like, I was like, before? "You're gonna need to it was never do that before. Oh, okay, that's you fine, never then. do that again around me. Just that will be the last time that I experience this. Are we? Are we clear?" <laughs> <laughs> Really, tr- I just wanted down. to like enjoy it. Like you just made me feel so much shame. We had a we had a raccoon eat one of our chickens like um, maybe a couple months ago, and it it ran up into the tree. And Erin comes running outside, and she starts yelling at the raccoon. She's like, "You should be ashamed of yourself." She's like lecturing the raccoon. The raccoon just like, "Okay, I just want to eat the chicken." Uh, like, yeah, just leave me. I don't alone. think it felt bad at all. I think it just wanted no, you to that- leave. I same, just looked and then ran away. Yeah, the same raccoon came back. I mean, I'm assuming it was the same raccoon. I guess it. I don't really know them apart, but um, like the next day, came back and I was spraying it in the face with a hose, trying to get it like out of my yard because I don't want it to eat my chickens. Um, and it just, it just like was not phased. I mean, I had like just ten feet away. The the hose was on like the the highest setting and, just and I'm just right it's in the yeah. face bath, and yeah. I mean it didn't even blink this is probably the cleanest it. shower it's had <laughs> yeah, yeah people years. think raccoons are like, like really like cute and oh they're so what cute are the, are the chickens vicious. like more of a pet or is it for 
I would they say they're eggs. pets at this point. They lay Ooh, eggs. Okay. I, I enjoy them. giving them a good life because I, I feel like the world really treats chickens like shit. Like, That's I, fair. I, so I just kind of enjoy like giving them a really good chicken life. So they like yeah. they run around, they like try to fly, they they scratch in the dirt, they they do all sorts of chicken things. Um, yeah, they have a good they have a good life for sure. Yeah, except when the occasional raccoon comes. Yeah, out. yeah. I built a new coop. We now, have a so. we have a really nice. Oh, raccoon <laughs> She got these yeah. like architecture plans, <laughs> and, and then energy. had a contractor come and do it. I for real after it was built was like, wait, before the chickens go in there. Why don't we dig out like a hot tub in here and like this can be really <laughs> Jacuzzi, nice? Jacuzzi, yeah, because jets it's cool. go on at it's 10 your, p.m. to 2 a.m. Do you ever watch those videos with the guys who dig the pools with like the stick? Uh, the the stick. They use like like a little stick or something, yeah, right? Oh like no, in I haven't the seen jungle. that. Oh, oh, were they, they like, like fast forward and time lapse or? Yeah, yeah, they like they like dig out. Yeah, crazy and it looks like unbelievable like, at the end. Dude, those guys would be the best in a print shop. Think about like. Of the getting shit done guy? Just getting shit done. Yeah. Those guys work hard. How, how did you guys, how do you guys balance? A lot of shops are also family owned, husband, wife, or brothers, father, son, something like that. Um, how do you guys like balance that? I mean, obviously, you know, you're taking care of the front, you're taking care of the back. But as you mentioned, it's like those things are just getting tossed and you oh, just want things done on that side. We stopped working together. Yeah. 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 What, in the we new was, facility or in the in the, in the new, new one? Facility. Yeah, uh, we did it for many years, but it it's just like it's just hard to. It's really hard to balance. I mean, I'd say that like um, when we did it like semi successfully, we had like a hard line of there is no work talk at home, right? Because also you know when you have small children um, like in the mix as well, you don't want to be like you know, fighting over shipping costs, you know, while, while your can kids you are like, can you read right. to me? You know, and yeah. you're like, I mean, that's a literal situation. Can you, you know, children like, you know, they need like pretty much undivided attention. Like nonstop. Yeah. Sure. So, um, but that's, that's really hard, you know, because like there were a lot of days where we would come home like angry at each other. So like having to just like compartmentalize that and be like okay so now I have to be like you know now it's like bath time bedtime blah 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 you know that was a lot just it's, from the was, growth of the shop and, yeah, yeah from the growth of the shop and I mean like I don't know there's just shit that happens like Justin would take like a an order that like I actually didn't think it was like financially feasible or it was like something new and we didn't have time or you know like something like that and I would be really frustrated right that he like put me in that position mm -hmm. and then that would flip or maybe you know I made a mistake on the floor and we lost some money and so then Justin would be angry at me and you have to find a way to like not make it about that other person like personally sure um but it's hard yeah yeah it's really and hard. we had a dynamic that uh, I think a lot of a lot of the print shops that I know that have like husband and wives who like work together it seems like a lot of them the 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 wife and i might be told i might be wrong but the ones that i've met it seems like the wife's normally like on sort of the office side or like an art side or something like that's not directly in i guess like competition a little bit and like we had a dynamic that was really hard because like my job is to you know take the orders and work with the customers and then aaron's running production so obviously when there's like an issue in production that happens it's like and now i'm getting yelled at by a customer it's like well i'm getting yelled at i gotta work it out with her and it's like it just creates like a really tough dynamic versus like if we were both on the office side and had a, a separate production manager or something i think it would be a different story but like there is like a lot of headbutting between i think in any uh, print shop you have like your office and production dynamic that's just kind of a little bit hard to to work within so yeah. and I tried a, a few times I tried to actually step out of the production management like role a few times and just would do like various like office thingies <laughs> administrative <Thingies>. things <laughs> yeah. uh, admin, you know, HR whatever but like to be honest my skill sets like on my feet I'm not like just very operational I'm just kind of a mover. Um, so I don't even think well unless I'm like, 
yeah, you're not like a solid like person to email. You're not even you're not even easy to get a hold of with a phone. Like you're like out there living your life. Yeah, I'm just a mover and a shaker. So like um, things would come up that like I knew like I was the ra- the right person to handle it. So like even you know like I I just always kind of like oozed into that role of like this is this thing came up and I know how to handle it and I just and rather than like try to explain it to somebody else while I'm just sitting at a desk you know I'm yeah. just gonna go do it and so it's well, difficult and it, and there's like I don't think either of us are without like feelings about it you know what I mean but, well I feel like you still I mean you're still it's not like you're not involved so like you've done a lot of live events this last year like when there's we still work together on like I, at least now I could come home and talk things through with you yeah. too. I could come home and be like, "Hey, this thing happened," and you'll give me like feedback on it, or like it. We could like talk about the business together now, and there's not like animosity. Like we definitely don't always agree still, which is, I think it's good. I think it's fine, but we're we don't fight over it, which is which is good. Yeah. There's not like feelings attached to it, and I think that actually makes so it, it was a lot like easier. the right move to. It was. I mean, I it, I. For a long time, and still I'm a little bit like, you know, like, fuck the patriarchy. Like, mm-hmm. why do I have to leave my job and my business mm-hmm. to, you know, but like... Well, the kids don't even like me. So <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's but, I mean, right? there's a reason like, why. You know yeah, he I mean? comes home with ink all over <laughs> it. <laughs> so, so they're, they're like, but I think like I've grown to accept that it actually like in, in our relationship, in this relationship that I'm in, it yeah. was the right move. Um, although, I mean, I don't know. Although, I get a little bored, to be honest. Um, so I'll probably, I don't know, maybe I'll start a new career. You I'm going to start, start a print shop. shop. I'm going to start a print yeah. shop. You should start a, uh, <laughs> like a software. I'm going to I'm gonna start, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start Barrel Monkey. Barrel Monkey Barrel printing. Monkey printing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Across the street. <laughs> We could sub out work to you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the leg up. Yeah. I mean, is that is that you know I don't know if live printing at some point is a thing. Is that you think an opportunity then where it's more separated? Yeah. I mean, I've I've done some like live events. I'm getting a little old for the live events. Just it's, like physically, it's really like a lot. You were at our wedding. Yeah, I, I was live shocked. printed your wedding. <laughs> you were you were actually there. Yeah. yeah. So um, for the listeners, we had a, our our wedding. We had a wedding. A little bit of <laughs> the more than a year ago. Um, that was but... Print Hustler Four. No, it's actually right after Print Hustler's Cough that year. But anyway, we have definitely wanted live printing. I got and... really good feedback about your wedding too, like or not like kind of funny feedback where I think Aaron. And was it Annie? We're saying yeah. like there are a few people in your family who were like, "Wait, so like is this Printavo? Like actually like, <laughs> yeah, the live yeah. printing?" Yeah, this is why I don't. There explain were there it. were like yeah. there were like a lot of Printavo jokes like during there the reception. There was a shocking amount of <laughs> yeah. Printavo jokes at the wedding. I was yeah. like, "You're like, oh god." Yeah, I was like I don't think I'd be signing think, up here. I think your, your <laughs> yeah. brother also made the print hustlers joke. Like, really? His feet or uh, something similar. Yeah, I think like, there was a fair amount of them. Like, thank you for co- for coming to Printavo's. I, I somebody should have said for That's everybody funny. to sign up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, everybody, open up your phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, but I. So we had live printing. It was awesome. But when I went over there, I was like, "Aaron's here." Yeah. And then you were just knocking them out. But people, yeah. I mean, you guys know, like people love seeing yeah. it. Right? But, That's great. Uh, yeah. But yeah. They love the shirts. They're like everybody. I still see wearing the all made shirts because they're like this, this is the best shirt. How would you yeah. get them? You know, the, the all made shirts really like they uh, they really stand up. Yeah, yeah. I like everybody like you know because we print shirts for like people in our community and um, almost every time it's on an all made shirt, like they're like I love this shirt. So comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like it fits me just right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the um, with live printing it was it's like really important to use like good products yeah yeah because you're there like associated with it so right it's like you're touching you it want it right yeah. There and see, yeah yeah but so you just oh because you would want to be there to try to manage with the live events if that was like a division that you feel like you would take on yeah maybe maybe yeah. 
Why? It's a it's so the live events run on like a shoestring budget usually. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there's a lot of like flying in, like unpacking a FedEx truck, you know, like or going to get stuff at a like location it's been shipped to previously, like a storage center, like putting it in your truck, going to the event, working the event, packing it all back up, going back to the storage facility or going to FedEx. I mean, it's like very, very, very labor intensive. Right. So. And you need like an actual manager of. Some yeah, sort. you need. Yeah, to- I mean, if so, a lot of the live printing events that happen successfully, or you have one person who can print lift things, pack things up really quickly, put a press together. I mean, it's like, so I feel like I'm too old for that. Well, but maybe not. I mean, I've done it before. I could I could do it. Like, But like, there's been a couple times where like, I threw my back out and now it's terrible. And and really? usually you're flying, you're flying back the same day. Yeah. So oh, it's just like, like a it's like active. a lot. It's like the worst 10 or 11 hours. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. This is a terrible pl- plug for live printing. It's yeah. not that bad. It's, it's a fun for like the right person, you know. There's a right. lot of man it because we have yeah. to we have equipment all over the country right. and then we have let's say like if we're doing 30 events in a in a month most of those are weekends so now you have multiple events within the same day in you know various like cities it's so a lot of it is like we have a trello board that's broken up where it's like where the equipment is actually going from event to event and sure like, or like, okay, wait, like we have something in Washington DC and then something like in Atlanta, but then we can get it back to DC or we're gonna leave it here. You know, so we, we end up like a lot of it really is just figure out the best way to leave equipment and then also make sure that when you go in, like so if we fly into an event or like a, a big thing that we we have a whole affiliate program, so we work with a lot of other print shops, but if they're using our equipment, we need to make sure that like, hey, when this event happened two weeks ago and everything got packed up again was it done properly or are they going to get to the event and realize half their shit's broken an hour before the event starts when there's already people lined up being like i want my shit right so it's pretty high stress i like to think of live printing as like um like high intensity screen printing or something like it's like yeah, it's kind of like a like a reality TV show almost. Like you get there, the squeegees are missing. How do you find squeegees in the next hour? <laughs> Can you use cardboard. You like, get you yeah. get there, and all of the bolts are just like loose in the bottom of the box, and you have to like assemble more of the press than you thought you would. You get there, and your screen clamp is bent, you and you have to find there. a rubber mallet. And bang it back. <laughs> Don't play it's, not fu- kind of, it's not fun. It's, these are well, all actual things that it's, have it's to really, me, so I'm Yeah, it's really stressful. And then, situations. and then you have to print, you know, and then you have like two hours to print 400 shirts. So there's also that part of it. That's the fun part, though, when you have the big line and you're just like, I can't look up. I can't look up. I yeah, can't look up. Like, and then two hours later, you're like, like a, shit, I did it. You're printing yeah. like a banshee. And then you, yeah. So, I mean, it's. It, it is fun sometimes, and then sometimes you're just like, want to cry. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's a, really, it's a different business. I it's mean, totally it would be like somebody is, going yeah. into just running a normal yeah. shop, and they'd say, holy yeah. crap, there's, out, you know, this happened. And it's we don't real market heavy on the live printing. Side, when we, so our, we have a separate site for live printing, right. and we treat it very different. So, like, when we do a live event, First of all, a lot of them, like probably two thirds of what we do is white label. So like it's it's not barrel maker, it's not liveprinting.com, it's just sort of like the brand, you know? So um so that's part of it. But then if we are pitching a service at all, all we're marketing is live printing. So we don't we don't try and like live print in events to get custom shirt orders. It's mm-hmm. like it's just we leave it right, as, right. as live. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely underestimated. Um, yeah, which is why I was excited when Max, yeah, did that talk about how he's really scaled up because he's done some crazy number so every many. year. Yeah, yeah. Um, who is that? Max, Max at Family Industries. I'll look him up. <laughs> <laughs> Jk, yeah. um, no, that's cool. I think I'm really, I'm still really bummed at like not having live events. I mean, that was the hardest part when COVID started was we had to refund a lot of money because we really? we never had to refund events up until that. And then we had the month that was booked. 
I guess that would be like March and maybe like April. That's when we started having events where it was like, oh, whoa, this is like just not happening. But I remember the very first one, we had, a, we had one for like Microsoft in Seattle that got canceled. And we we're like, holy shit, like really? They canceled that for like COVID? This is like early March. Sure. And then it, but then they all started. Right. Trickling. So I, I feel I feel confident it's going to come back really strong. I think that when when events other than like Trump rallies continue, um, I think that there's going to be I think people want to go out. People want to get back into like living their lives and lives. I think it will come back and I think sure. it will come back strong. So what what do you feel like is the end? goal? Have you ever thought about like an end goal? Or is it more yeah. of, I, I want to be... you Okay, so what is it? Well, I fluctuate, I mean... Or is it... Because yeah. you also talked about being very profitable. I think you guys mentioned that, which yeah. shops don't necessarily... Th- I think they think about it more now with Profit uh-huh. First and all that, which is awesome. Yeah. But a lot of business books also, though, talk about that. I would say right now we're not at a very good profitable place in our career. Like... We're less profitable now than we were obviously a year ago. Like, like, and I attribute everything right now to just co like COVID. We're we're down over last year. Like, we're I'm okay with like losing some money. I I just personally just, just want to get to like it yeah, yeah, I want to get to like next uh, April May, and then if shit's still a mess, that's gonna be a problem. But I'm hoping like that's sort of what I'm looking at is like okay, we're gonna get through and i mean we had we've had killer days so it's weird like we've still had a few like random you know 30 40 thousand dollar days but we're having days in between where it's like two to three thousand dollars where it's just like wait what like we're that's super for us that's really low like we need to do better than that so it's 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 hard anyways in terms of i think goals like i i switch Cause sometimes I'm like, you know, I have a good setup going now. Like I, it's, I don't get as stressed out as I used to. So like, I feel like my quality of life's okay. Like I could pay my bills. Like I have an okay income. Like I'm like fine with that part. So I'm like, I could ride this out. I, I could and should ride this out as long as I can. But then there's other times too, where it's just like, I don't know, like, do I want to do something else with my life? Should I try and sell? Should I try and consolidate? I've thought a lot about Ideally, I think a really good scenario for a print shop would be consolidating with other print shops. So, like, for example, like, I think it would be a really good play um, to reach out to, like, maybe three other shops that do similar volume and say, like, hey, we're going to, like, why don't we all partner up and use one production facility, like, minimize, like, our expenses, our overhead, all that, and, like, basically all advertising and order processing and, you know, I think that type of model would would give like really good growth hmm. you know so um, do you think 20 years i mean yeah have you thought about it enough to say hey i want to try to make this just as profitable of a business as possible or is it like you said yeah you know i'm not sure this is what we want to be doing or is it or is it just well, more of the focus now the, it's as long as we can ride it out too. Like technology is changing, print on demand is going to become more and more of a thing. So we have to stay current with like being able. Like we we do fulfillment, but we don't we don't have any sort of like revolutionary like software that's going to connect us to like you know brands who are selling print on demand and things like that. So mm-hmm. I think like we need to figure out at some point like hey, how do we stay current with the technology and how the industry is going partner with someone who's current or just accept that at some point you know that we're we're gonna stop growing and and have a decline because there's going to be more innovative companies that come along so i mean i sometimes think about that just you know we're that there is going to be a change in like technology and how that stuff goes and yeah and that model changes too right now i just kind of look at my focus personally is like coasting a little bit getting us through this like next like year or so where it's a little bit harder i want to um keep spending time on live printing and how we could grow that and improve it for when it does come back um i could personally see myself wanting to just dedicate myself to the live events and growing that side of the business um and looking for some sort of partnership or something for for barrel maker and for like custom printing because i think that i think we could benefit a lot from a strategic partnership versus trying to create a new model or something that maybe isn't going to be our strong point. Yeah. It's interesting. Do you have any, I mean, obviously now having 
sort of separated a little bit from the day-to-day yeah. piece of it. But do you have any thoughts as far as where you think? I mean, it's a weird thought, right? Of like end goal. What is the end goal of the business? You don't really yeah, know. Yeah, I don't really but, know. I mean. Or maybe it's more of a question of what you want from it. Any like screen printing based, like custom print shop is going to need to evolve um, in the next, you know, five to 10 years, like pretty quickly. And yeah, I mean, it remains to be said, like what we're going to do um, to kind of like grow as the industry is growing and to, to remain like, I don't want to even say remain viable because like nobody, you know, that's not a very exciting response. You know, no business owner is like, I just want to remain viable you know you want to like you you want to offer your customers like an exciting option or um really find a niche where you're you know you can do something you know a little better than your competitors or you're focusing on something different um a different experience for customers so i mean all of that kind of uh, remains to be seen feral maker definitely can thrive in that space um but it's just i mean i think it's just a matter of how much you want to put into it i mean and skill set like there's stuff that like want to see change and i'd love to be able to do and i could draw like a you know like a diagram or like a flow chart of like how something i'd like to see the transition to how we process like reorders and give the customers a new experience right like things like that but like do we do i then also have the resource to get like um you know, a tech team with like developers and all that to be able to do that. Do I have the money to do it? Like, do I, I don't even know where to start. And then would I have the energy to do that to sure. like micromanage all that? So sometimes it's also just being like, yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff I want to do, but do like, I could think about that or I could just go ride around on the motorcycle and like zone out. Like, I think right now <laughs> listen to the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Listen to, to you shit. mentioned the, uh, the, the digital stuff. And yeah. Print on demand. Is that where you think, Things are headed. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we because we're getting into it a little bit now. I mean, we we definitely do a decent amount of fulfillment, but we don't do like we don't really do like print on demand, but we kind of lightly offer it here and there, like with DTGs and even uh, we had a customer about a year ago where we kind of did print on demand screen printing. It was all one color prints, so we like dabbled that way and. I definitely think that it's the model because people don't want to pre-buy a bunch of overhead. People don't want to invest in necessarily like a limited amount of designs. They still want to be able to offer it. And then on the on the end side, we have a whole culture that's used to like Amazon and wanting stuff quickly. We struggle with this, but I'm personally of the mindset that if you get something next day, you're going to be happier than if you get something two weeks later, even if it's nicer. I think people want shit quick. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how do we balance that? Especially like Barrel Maker is... One thing that's kind of interesting is we haven't really changed as a company since we started. Like at the very, very beginning, I found like a magnet that we made or something where we were like, at, it was like a fridge magnet. And it's like, you know, basically like our sh- our shtick, like kind of at the beginning and now is the same, which is like we promote like is eco-friendly materials as we can. So like that sh- shifted a little bit, like our blanks, like we, you know, primarily work with like all made or Royal apparel or things that are like, you know, hemp or organic cotton and stuff like that. We use a ton of water-based inks. Um, we try our best to be a good sustainable company, but that's not, um, and Aaron's like a huge integral part of this is like from the very beginning, our goal has been like, you have to do those things as a company because it's the right thing to do, but that's not how you should necessarily focus your marketing. Like we don't need to be like, Oh, we're organic. So everything's going to be like granola, you know, uh, you know, tan and like, you know, super eco green Mm -hmm. printing Mm -hmm. or whatever. It's like, no, like we're going to print with like these ink types or these products or utilize these materials or act a certain way because it's the right thing to do. You know, it's ethical. It's just like the right thing to do. And so it's sort of interesting because we haven't really wavered from that. So it's also like, how do we maintain some of those values and then also grow towards, you know, just other directions, right? Um, sure. But I, I'm curious, like, do you, what's your, like, do you have an end goal or like what? How, oh, end goal? Um, do you think about that? I've thought about it because... Um, well, forever it was just totally focus on shops, focus on the customer, and it's still very much 100% is. But um, there are points, right, where, uh, you know, we've talked about um, 
as an owner, you want to be able to be financially like, okay with what you're doing. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think like it's important where I, I feel like for everything that I've put into it, I want to feel that, Hey, I'm, I'm essentially earning a salary that makes sense for, yeah. for that. Right. Um, to put it plainly, yeah, I think it's going to get there, but I also, I personally want to reinvest as most as possible now. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, like at least for us, opportunity is really good. There's not, you know, really good options out there. It's going to be an interesting transition into digital and print on demand and are fulfillment. You, and are you trying to make Printavo a company that could bridge that gap for printers to go print on demand? I think I think to we are serving shops to be able to help them grow and organize, and that's just where they're going to go. So that's where we're going to help try to lead. Yeah. Right. I mean. It's no question that, you know, the big press maker, M&R and Rock, for example, the, you know, two of the largest probably, at least here, are investing a lot into digital. Yeah. yeah. A lot. And that's all they talk about. Right. right. And so there's a big sign. You guys saying that is a big sign where people don't want to have an inventory. People want stuff quick. They don't care as much about quality. Yeah. Right. Um is another big sign seeing some of these i think it's still very expensive to get into it properly like yeah. you can't just get one dtg or you know like you really need yeah. either 15 or yeah, we digital squeeze or something to like start with and it's like nothing yeah and the and, tech is still sucks. sort of getting there but it's the worst everybody's talking about i mean in plus you see we were just talking about this but the percentage of total retail sales that went e-commerce especially over covid jumped from like it was like 17 percent to 29 percent or 26 something like massive right it jumped 50 yeah. percent within yeah. a month wow. in april so you know and plus a small business a barber shop also doesn't want to be stocking shirts like you said yeah right so i've been so hmm. well so like with Printava, like you're Okay, it's like in your name, right? Like Printavo, but have yeah. you thought about Digitavo? Like, yeah, why aren't you <laughs> why aren't you in other industries like Clean Tavo or like Contractor Tavo or like whatever, yeah. you know, like I mean, it's so hard. I personally feel to We actually had this discussion early on because there's so many near spaces, right? Signage, engraving, mm-hmm. um uh and, and it's so hard to get one right really mm-hmm. well that yeah. we're going to add other layers that we're trying to also do at the same time. It's like already hard enough to hire the right people to help build the right products, to help service it, to do the sales. So if we can do this one really, really well and then continue to pivot along with where the industry goes, I think mm-hmm. we can really tap into that space. And I think there's a, there's a lot of shops here and I think there's a lot of shops that are very textile heavy internationally too. Can you imagine yeah. how pissed Zach would be if you like started dedicating time to digital, to, like make Printavo <laughs> for like pets, like pet <laughs> management or something? Like, yeah, you know, we do have some interesting shops that come along that there's this like, awesome reporting feature, but it only works for uh, the dog program, right? Now. Yeah, sorry, sorry Zach. <laughs> I mean, you. I think realistically too, you'd have to to fundraise or something to actually be able to compete and and go broad market like a monday.com or like a sauna right have you ever gotten approached by a bigger company oh yeah almost daily they send seriously yeah really like well because they hire what they do is they'll hire more junior people that are reaching out to companies that they find through their databases and are like hey we want to talk we're this investment company we have this much to invest i mean it's just emails though so who knows if it goes through but i think for for to 100 percent own the business means that the control and the focus is on our customer, not on satisfying our investor yeah. and then the customer because right. they put all this money in, yeah. you know. So technically, they're the focus first yeah. Yeah. and returning yeah. their money. Then the next is how do we do that with the customer? So, right. And, and then we can do whatever the heck we want. Like, we, yeah, you yeah. know, we want to make it fun. We want to do that. If you invest, you have to allocate those dollars yeah. to hiring, to growth, to – and it's not – that doesn't seem that fun. It's no. like, yeah. No. Anyway, we've had similar discussions, you know, when people want to invest in Barrel Maker, and it's yeah. like, I don't know. It's like, do I have to talk to you before I like 
So you are sort yeah. of for yeah. this. That's what the board meetings. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, here's where we're going. And here's it's a, a loss of control. You know, as, like, like I don't know. You it seems like it causes a lot of delay or potential delays too between yeah. just being able to take action when you're like motivated. It's like you're like cool. I'm like feeling pumped. I have this idea. Let's like let's do it. Versus like, hey guys, we got to talk about this thing. You know, and sure. Kind of. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I, I I don't know. I, I feel like Barrel Maker in some way has run on this like um, like the creative energy behind it is very like spontaneous, and I I feel like it might just like die in a boardroom. <laughs> like, yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Are you typically like pretty motivated and like upbeat with like Printable or like do you get down? Like, I have I have such like an uh optimistic view on like everything it's very hard to really? like drag it down yeah i mean and this sounds sort of braggy but, but it's to a point where it's like detrimental sometimes yeah. because i'm like oh let's just do this and blah, blah blah and like the team's like whoa hold on you know like let's think about this it's you know it and, and i'm i'm thankful that they do sort of reel it in yeah, yeah. a bit so it's a good balance between the two who's your biggest competitor I would say um, it depends. So upmarket, Shopworks, and Impress are probably larger uh, competitors. There are a couple competitors that just do stores, obviously. Inksoft, Order My Gear. You know, Inksoft's trying to do a little bit more shop management. Um, and then sort of below, I kind of consider like uh, ShopFox or SignFox type. Um, there's also the Fast Manager. To be yeah. honest, I think a lot of shops are still very much so on quickbooks whiteboard pen and paper we kind of joke that our biggest competitor is pen and paper because wow. yeah. we talk to more shops that are just not using anything yeah or, or trying to piece it together which makes sense how do you, you find started. new shops yeah, that's what we did too, yeah. like what's your strategy now for like finding like new um customers it's interesting because when you said that i kind of go into the day thinking that this is the last day i want to have more of that i feel like, like i used to have more of today? that what's that like like do you ever worry that you're gonna get a bunch of cancellations or no it's hard for me to focus on that part because we have a really good success team now that's like just executes and focus on that so i can focus on like that like you talk about the sales partnerships yeah. marketing stuff i find that i can't do I mean, it's like you said, you can't do everything well. And yeah. and when I try to do that, it's just, it's a lot of anxiety. It's just not a good situation. Yeah. What the heck were we even talking about? Where are we going? I don't know. I think how I the know. purchase orders think... don't have a price on them. I think that's... <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> we... no, I think it's really important, though, for like, like for the person who's like innovating something new or like the leader of a team to have just like that positivity that like won't quit. No, it's great. That's yeah, great. I mean, I think, I mean, I think that a lot of um, like people I know who are heads of businesses like also have that quality. It's just interesting. It's the I mean, it's like the whole traction. They say that there's like an innovator and the the implementer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And innovator, integrator. Yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Where one's like sort of Ryan like Moore just looking like the next year, the next two years, or whatever, and then the other one's like operationally trying to Target, digest yeah. it and Do execute you it print call stock up <laughs> is stock up actually still... stock up's a competitor i would say that they're more a you little didn't bit mention more... them and i was wondering if they're still are they still around yeah they had some they I... suffered from some controversy did they not i think bruce made that up <laughs> no. somebody, somebody no. well it it's hit? it's owned by a shop right yeah so yeah i think somebody well, was saying that like they, they say that it's not but it is right or yeah, do they so, now i don't know somebody was saying like the I... client list there's like there's there's no way that the client list is not like visible i yeah i don't i don't know the details i mean i, I met with them a couple times a while ago i i mean i think it's an interesting it has some interesting concepts to it yeah but we're like we are so heavy investing on making the program a shop, like a place where you can start your shop and then grow yeah. like a 10 auto type of shop and continue right. to and so there's a lot like as we move up that and we're building more mm -hmm. to go up market like that there's just so like the capacity, the scheduling. Yeah. And then on top of it, you've got shops that are all managing stuff. Like I wanted to do it this way and do it that way. Yeah. So how do you make it really flexible? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
our problem, like you guys talk about, is just big people. We have discovered that you can't just hire any person who can code and just put them in and be like, help us own this. It's almost, it almost takes away progress because you fix stuff that they may have broken. You guide them and spend all this time. And it's like, if you spend the extra time to find the right people, then it, it turns out so much better. And thanks so much for being able to join us, guys. It's been awesome. Thanks so much, everybody who's listening to to the Printavo Pronouncers podcast. Printavocast. Printcast? No. Printavo's Pronouncers podcast. It's been awesome. This is Justin Moore and Aaron That's Moore. way better. Printavo's Print Hustlers podcast or <laughs> Printavocast. Real Maker, a.k.a. the newest branding agency in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, thank you, Bruce.